this video, I'm going to be talking about the recent update that came out for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and explain why it is the most important update that Asobo have done for the simulator so far. I'm also going to be flying the Fly Inside Bell helicopter, which is incredible. So fasten your seatbelts, we're probably going to land in the ocean. But uh, let's get on with the video. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Fly Inside Bell helicopter as we let's just regain control of it as we go from the menu back to the helicopter. And uh, if you haven't, guys, if you if you have not seen this helicopter yet or tried it, uh, you need to because it is literally the most engaging and compelling <laughs> vehicle that you can fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I will warn you though, you will need good rudder pedals and you will need a good joystick. Or I guess you could you, you could turn the settings down on the helicopter so it's a little bit less finicky. So you could still play with the gamepad. But to get the full proper experience, you need rudder pedals and a nice joystick. In this case, I'm actually using racing simulator pedals, uh, the uh, Mecha Cup 1 pedals, and I'm using the absolutely incredible the mind-bogglingly good uh, Brunner force feedback base with a Hotas Warthog stick on it, and then I'm using the Hotas um, Warthog throttle uh, to control the uh, the, the uh, collective. So here we go, flying towards New York City. You can even see the uh, the buildings piercing the clouds. Just how how, how nice is that? How, how nice is that? Sunrise over New York. Amazing. The key thing is here, though, is that this is amazing visually and experientially in this helicopter whilst running at a good, smooth frame rate. And this is the thing with the latest update is it absolutely, absolutely transforms the game purely from the fact that the latest update now allows you to get a perfectly smooth frame rate, in my case with a 2080 Ti, with the graphics turned up pretty high. I mean, look, we've just got a bloody city here. There's, a, there's literally a city here that's photogrammetry with a sunrise. And this is butter smooth. This is like... This is the smoothest butter you've you've ever had. This is butter not from a fridge. This is like this is melted butter smooth. Um, and in the, in the past, you you know, if you weren't in cities, you if you weren't in cities, you could um, you could get good frame rates. But for the most part, if you went into somewhere like New York or London, you would just you, it, you would get a low frame rate, but crucially, you would also end up getting um, stutter. And, you know, if you're flying at a high altitude and you're in, uh, like, a, a, um, a light aircraft or even a jet, but you're at a high altitude, maybe, maybe that stutter's not too bad. Maybe it's not the end of the world. You could play the game before. But if you were flying close to buildings in built-up areas um, or when it came to like landing and the weather's bad and the high precision moments and so you're actually you know you're actually playing the simulator as a as a sort of skill game rather than just a procedural procedural game of uh, put, put your plan in and you know point the plane in the right in the correct direction if you were playing it as a sort of actual skill based maneuvering a physics object through a 3d environment type game uh, the stutter really 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 made it not impossible to be super super precise uh, where and now <laughs> it, it's on another level and, and the fact is this bell helicopter um, is possibly the hardest um, aircraft that you can fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It, it, it is an absolute arse of a vehicle to fly. Uh, that's why I love it, <laughs> but it is terrible. Like if, if someone was to if someone was to sit down and go, right, what is the best? What is the what is the worst type of helicopter 
we could possibly build in the, the best possible way that we could kill pilots, they would come up with the Bell helicopter. It is atrocious, but mastering its atrociousness, I think I've just invented a, a word there, or getting, or getting vaguely proficient at mastering its atrociousness, due to its atrociousness, makes it so, so rewarding. Strange how that works. And uh, now, thanks to thanks to smooth frame rates, <laughs> and that building is on our collision course with us. Let's just miss that. Thanks to smooth frame rates, uh, now you can actually master its atrociousness without so much, without as much pain, <laughs> pain as before. Uh, uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. So this, the the last update, as I said, with the, with the improvement to frame time specifically, the, the frame rates have actually improved as well. So the game does run. The average frame rate has increased, um, but the smoothness, as I say, is the biggest thing. Aside from that, the fact that also we now the, the game is now on console uh, is also absolutely awesome. <laughs> now it might not seem it like if you're a PC gamer, you're probably like, "Ah, oh, bloody games consoles." And you know there are downsides to games consoles, like you. You'll have noticed from the design of Microsoft Flight Sim, its user interface and some of it is quite clunky. If you know, if you, oh, nice tennis court down there. If you were, you know, if you're using it as a as a PC sim, the interface is clearly designed in in a large part for to be used with a gamepad due to a degree of consoleitis. So there are negatives with console uh, having console support if you're a PC user, but the console obviously is probably what's pushed the performance the, the necessity of getting the performance down so it actually can run at 30 fps uh, on the consoles and that means it will run at 60 100 fps on pcs uh, with, with good system um but the awesome thing with the consoles is that the sheer number of people that will now be brought into flight simulator microsoft flight simulator you know, maybe they're going to play it like as a, as a hardcore sim, and you know, maybe it's going to be just more a bit of a novelty to it. But that doesn't really matter. That the point is, the the user base that's on console just is 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 huge. It's a huge user base, and they will play the console version, and they'll be like, "Oh, this is good." Some of them will be like, "Well, some of them will play it and be like, oh, right, it's fine." They, you know, they'll they'll be happy with it, take it casually, and they'll be done with it." Some of them will play it and they'll be like, oh, this is amazing. I'm loving this on the console. I'm perfectly happy with it. But then there'll also be a fraction of people, which will still be a very sizable chunk of people, that will play it on console and go, I want more. <laughs> I want more. This isn't good enough. I want more. And then, and as a result, they'll be like, how do I get more? PC. Before you know it, those console gamers that want more will be having to get beast computers and they will be sucked into PC simulation land. Which also means they'll probably be sucked into racing simulator land and VR simulator land. So it's really, it, it, even though it wouldn't on the face of it seem like a, a console launch of a game would really do that much, in the sort of next two to three years, it really, really does actually have a, quite a big impact on that's quite close <laughs> on pushing um, pushing the high-end PC side of stuff and, and helping more people set to park helping more people ruin their lives getting into the the high-end absolute luxurious absolute top end of simulators which is what I personally I personally love you know getting you know, I mean, look, look, look at this. I'm playing on an ultra wide monitor. I'm using a force feedback joystick. I'm using, I am using driving sim pedals rather than like pendular rudder pedals and stuff. But I actually love using these pedals as an input for this. I'm on like a, it's mental, but it is amazing. It's absolutely incredible. And uh, the more, the more of a market there is for companies to make these mental devices or to sell these mental devices to. Well, the, the more the more these mental devices get made, the better they, they are, the better it is for me. So really, the entirety of this video is me just saying, I'm glad that this game's... Well, first of all, I'm glad about the frame rate because it makes the innate gameplay better. Secondly, I'm really excited 
that the actual console version of the game isn't crap and that it's going to bring more people into Sims, which will make Sims better for me. It's <laughs> so I've managed to turn this into an entirely egocentric, narcissistic uh, benefit for myself. Typical YouTuber. But I, I just think it's, it's, you know, it's a really, really exciting time if you are one of those people that want to uh, justify your ludicrous hobby and, and you want your ludicrous hobby to, to develop more. Uh, just really, really good to see. Look at these trees. I'm popping over here. I do wonder... One thing I really wonder about, though, is um, with the uh, console version of this, if there will be a way for mod to get across. So you, you'll have noticed... My God, I can hear my... Whoop! I can hear my RPM slowing down. <laughs> yeah, this helicopter spontaneously decides to, like run out of power from its RPMs and also if you go above 100 uh, uh, 100 uh, knots it flips over spontaneously just to keep things exciting <laughs> if it wasn't dangerous enough just to keep things exciting um, I, what I wonder about Jesus Christ keep on track what is wrong with this guy bold idiot in a flight sim with the mods and stuff so you'll notice with Microsoft Flight Sim that they've got their on PC, it's very convoluted. You have the Microsoft Store, you have the in-game updater, and then you have the content store in the game. <laughs> and if you bought it on Steam, you've got another another layer. Four four layers of abstract ab abstraction for installing crap. It's mental on PC. Oh, nice, another helicopter. Hello, matey. Um, but the fact that it's got its in-game store there presumably means that mods... Payware mods, at least. Maybe maybe they'll allow free mods to get on there. Um, people on console will actually have an ability to buy those mods as well. Um, so that is, that's quite interesting to me because it, it means you have an avenue for, for mods on console, which is a re really quite a rare thing. And I, I don't actually know of any other game that has mods available on console like a way to access them and it'd be really interesting to see if that's something that driving simulators could do now part of me doesn't want that in the sense that i really like free mods um, and also i'd rather not have absolutely convoluted ways of getting content I, you know i'd rather things just update through steam but you know the, the uh, having a marketplace in a game if it's done well and ideally if it can update without you having to load it up constantly if there's a way to update it outside the game that'd be perfect but having a marketplace in the game so so that mod makers can access the market of the PC market, but also access the console market as well. Um, you know, it, 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 it gives more of a, an avenue for very small indie teams that are producing some of this incredible content before even the developer of the core game can to actually monetize it. And again, it creates a more vibrant uh, ecosystem and, and marketplace um, for hardcore simulators. Uh, and for us to get as an end user for us to have more absolutely incredible content to play uh, rather than just being stuck to like whatever the, the core developer decided to put in or what the core developer was able to license so yeah no, that so that that's a really interesting aspect we'll, we'll have to wait and see to see how that rolls out on the uh, Microsoft Store on Mark on flight sim 2020 on the on the Xbox um, but as I say, it would be interesting if that sort of thing happens with uh, driving simulators and other games as well. It's quite convoluted to set up a game store. But yeah, I, I think there's, there's a lot of really interesting things that have come out of Microsoft Flight Sim that I've not seen in, a, in other games. Look at these rooftops. Look at all these. In America, they, they put like water storage tanks on top of the roof. I, I guess it's the best way to... Well, I presume they have to pump water up there in the first place. But once it's pumped up, then the water pressure you got is up there with pressure. I don't know how that works. I need to. Na this is how you end up going. <laughs> play marks off flights in, but before you know it, you're researching water tanks on New York rooftops. Whoa, that's close. <laughs> oh man. So, all told, this I don't want this video to go on too long here. What? What? What does he do? This guy just talks too much. <laughs> all told, this update is superb if you if you had Microsoft flight sim or you tried it on the um, when it was on sale uh, or, or you know with the game pass and then you tried it when it first came out and you're like oh, no it don't quite run well I'm, oh, I don't, I'm not sure 
and then you've not picked it up again. Now is 100% the time to like load it back up and, be, and have your mind blown away. Uh, also, if you're, if you're on like a 10 series graphics card or older, you should now be able to play it at actually a playable frame rate without stutter. Um, but if you, if you own it and you just needed an excuse to boot it up again, now is that time to boot it up again because it has it has transformed there it is worth noting that there the update stuff there's still a lot of stuff to be done with Microsoft Flight Simulator I think I think it still does need more sort of gameplay to it there are there are more sort of uh, bush trips that you can do and there's there's lots of mod missions and stuff and there's the landing challenges so there is some gameplay stuff to do in there but I definitely think it could have a lot more missions. I mean, I'd, I'd love some more sort of gamey gameplay stuff like a crop dusting mission or different locations of crop dusting or like glider, glider more sort of like a glider mission where you have to try and glide for as long as possible or use ridge lift, you know, gameplay. It's definitely still lacking in that. There's the Empire State Building. Um, but it does have some stuff in there, missions for you to do if you're more of a gamer rather than a flight simmer. But that's a shortcoming, and uh, also there are some, with the last update there are some bugs in terms of like when you click on the on the on the world map sometimes the time swips backwards and forwards to day and night so you have to manually change it when you're actually in the environment. Um, I think there's a hot there is a uh, hot patch uh, coming out soon. Uh, I think it's actually coming out to later today, uh, which will hot fix it. And I will say as well because I can't be I can't be entirely po uh, positive. I will say as well, um, the the actual initial download. Bloody hell! Look at that. The initial download. Let's land. I'm going to land on that building over there. It's got a flat roof on it. The initial download of the game is a right pain in the ass. I had to leave it on overnight, and you have to not only load the game up and then have that download, but you also have to. Um, you also have to. Um, then update the content in the game as well, separate to... Oh, shit, that's the back of the helicopter. Ah, <laughs> oh, reversed into... There you go. I told you we are going to land upside down. I forgot that there was a back to the helicopter. So I... So, <laughs> so I ended up landing... I ended up landing in with the back of the helicopter and killing myself. Oh, that's a perfect landing in this. Um, yes. So the updating is annoying. It's not perfect, there's a patch coming out. It's only going to get better. But the point is, what an update. What an update that they've done. Amazing. Great times for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And as I say, very interesting stuff for simulators in general. But hopefully you enjoyed this meandering ranty talk about Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you did, you know what you need to do. Click that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to hear more of, what you'd like me to talk about. And uh, that's about it, though. So until the next one, guys, thank you very much for watching. Happy tea drinking and goodbye.